Shantao alone in his time clarified the Buddha's true intent, and deeply drawing on the primal vow, he established the true teaching. Sorrowed by the plight of practicers, meditative or non-meditative, and those of grave evil, he reveals that Amida's name and light are the cause that brings about birth. When one enters this gate, leading to nirvana, and encounters true mind, without fail one acquires the bodhisattva wisdom, confidence, joy, and awakening. And attaining the birth that surpasses comprehension, one immediately realizes the eternal bliss of suchness. Genshin, having broadly explained the teachings of Sakyamuni's lifetime, wholeheartedly took refuge in the land of peace and urges all to do so. In accord with the sutras and treatises, he chooses the teaching and practice of birth in the pure land. Truly, they are eye and limb for us of this defiled world. Ascertaining the virtue of the single practice and the inadequacy of diversified practice, he leads us to turn and enter the Nembutsu gate, which is true and real. Solely by distinguishing profound and shallow minds of devotion, he sets forth truly the difference between the fulfilled land and the transformed land. Genku, clearly understanding the sacred scriptures, turned compassionately to foolish people, both good and evil. Establishing in this remote land the teaching and realization that are the true essence of the Pure Land way, he transmits the selected primal vow to us of the defiled world. Return to this house of transmigration, of birth and death, is decidedly caused by doubt, Swift entrance into the city of tranquility, the non-created, is necessarily brought about by Shinjin. Through their treatises and commentaries, these patriarchs, all with the same mind, save beings in the countless worlds of utter defilement and evil. All people of the present, both monk and lay, should rely wholly on the teachings of these venerable masters. Here ends the hymn, 120 lines in 60 verses. <laughs>